Welcome to Los Cabos, my friends. My house is your house. Here are the best things to do, places to see, activities, and excursions for your next trip to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. We're starting with Land's End. This is the breathtaking natural attraction located at the southernmost tip of the Baja California Peninsula, and what Cabo San Lucas is most famous for. Here you'll find iconic rock formations, including the famous Arch of Cabo San Lucas, known as El Arco. Because it sits perfectly between the Pacific Ocean and the Sea of Cortez, this arch was formed over thousands of years by the weathering forces of these two seas crashing together. Getting to the arch and enjoying it from different perspectives brings us to the next few things on our list of top activities in Cabo San Lucas. Taking a clear boat tour to the arch is one of the top boat tours in Cabo, and you'll quickly see why. In this completely transparent boat, you get unobstructed views of the surroundings and the turquoise water beneath your feet, including all the bright colored tropical fish. This is crazy. <laughs> Wow. Okay, this is really cool. You'll pass by beaches and end with the big arch that reveals itself, where you'll park it for a few minutes and admire the area and take some photos. Welcome to Los Cabos, my friends. My house is your house. You can take your own photos, or your guide will also take photos that you can purchase at the end of the tour. This is also a great tour for cruise ship passengers, as it's only about a 50 minute ride. It's about $40 USD per person. And here's a tip, when you get on the boat, try to sit at the front of the starboard side for the best views. Okay, this glass boat tour is way cooler than I thought it would be, to be honest. 100% recommend. If you want to get into the water, another way to enjoy Land's End is to take a water taxi to Lover's Beach and Divorce Beach. The water taxis are always available and should run you anywhere from $10 to $15 per person. You'll be dropped off at Lover's Beach, which is only accessible by boat. And the sand here is golden caramel in color and pillowy soft, and you can swim in the water, which is calm and crystal clear. As you may or may not know, not every beach in Cabo is swimmable only a select few, and this is one of them. If you walk across the beach to the other side, you'll end up facing the Pacific Ocean at Divorce Beach. The water here is rough and definitely not swimmable, but beautiful to admire nonetheless. The Sea of Cortez is also home to a variety of wildlife, including sea lions, dolphins, and whales. During the winter months from December to April, Cabo San Lucas is a popular destination for whale watching. Join a tour to see these majestic creatures up close as they migrate through the area's warm and calm waters to give birth and raise their babies. Humpback whales are the most common sightings, but during the peak season in January, you might see other species including blue whales, gray whales, and even orca whales. I recommend going on a whale watching tour in the morning around 8 or 10 a.m. because this is when the water is most calm. All right, if you don't know, I'm about to tell you, Cabo gets the most amazing sunsets. So that means you have to do a sunset cruise out to the arch. So that's what we're going to do right now. We can't move on from the arch before enjoying its striking scenery at sunset. So we took a yacht cruise to experience it in its full glory. The arch is beautiful in the morning when it's all lit up against the bright turquoise water, but sunset is when it really glows. The yacht experience is a nice step up from the smaller boats and you get to enjoy drinks on board with comfortable seating. You'll see the arch at golden hour and then watch the sun dip below the ocean, leaving a rocky silhouette against a glowing orange sky. Saw 
some whales? We had a fantastic experience with Blue Sky Cabo, but there are other companies to choose from as well, including a sailing sunset cruise with Cabo Sailing Adventures. The Sea of Cortez was nicknamed the Aquarium of the World by Jacques Cousteau because of its array and variety of marine life. So of course, snorkeling is breathtaking here. Along the tourist corridor between San Lucas and San Jose, Chileno Bay and Santa Maria Beach are two popular beaches for snorkeling due to the calm water from being situated within sheltered coves. However, if you want to stick close to the marina, there are some tour operators who will also take you to Pelican Beach, which is about halfway to the arch, so only about a 10 minute ride. Moving on to land to give your sea legs a break, one of the experiences I recommend doing on your first day or early on in your trip is a walking food tour. We joined One More Taco Tours for a three-hour culinary journey through the streets of downtown Cabo San Lucas. Not only was this a great way to sample different foods from multiple restaurants and try some new-to-us menu items, we learned a lot about the different states of Mexico through the cuisine itself. First time eating beef tongue. It's pretty delicious. Although, it feels kind of weird saying that, <laughs> but it's good. And even got some hands-on experience. Like this? Uh, and then peel it in your hand, uh -huh, like that very, with care, with, with care. That's it can break, oh. <laughs> it can break. That's okay. Okay. Very <laughs> How does the food get better and better? <laughs> mm. We tried sopes, tacos, ceviche, tostadas, ice cream, churros, and tequila. Definitely come hungry because you get a ton of food on this tour. But if the walking tour doesn't interest you, they also offer a Mexican cooking class where you can make your own salsas, tortillas, margaritas, and end with salsa dancing lessons. If you're feeling adventurous and want to work off some of those tacos, you can try out sandboarding. This desert sport is basically like snowboarding but on sand. We booked a tour with Daniel through Airbnb experiences and had an amazing time getting off the beaten path. He took us to a secluded sand dune area where it was quiet, peaceful, and had incredible views of the surrounding beaches. After a quick lesson, starting on some smaller hills and a couple of falls, we graduated to some steeper dunes and glided into the sunset. The best part is, when you fall, it doesn't hurt. This is definitely an active experience though, but our guide tailored it to all skill levels. Plus, we saw whales and manta rays jumping in the distance in the ocean. And overall, it was a great way to spend a few hours in the late afternoon and get away from the city and the crowds and enjoy some time in the beautiful Baja Desert. For another crazy sand experience, did you know you can ride camels on the beach in Cabo? This is definitely something unique and different compared to other typical Mexico excursions. This Baja Desert Tour includes not only camel rides on the beach, but also an eco-farm tour, a multi-course traditional Mexican lunch, and of course, ending with tequila and mezcal tastings. If you want something a little more tame, but just as lively, head to San Jose del Cabo on Thursday nights for the Art Walk. San Jose del Cabo is the other city that makes up the tourist corridor of Los Cabos, and it's about a 35 to 40 minute drive from San Lucas. We took an Uber for about $25. The art walk is in the downtown gallery district, 
where several of the flag-lined streets become pedestrian-only, and it's a celebration of local artists, boutique shopping, food, music, and more. And when you're done exploring, there's a number of great restaurants, and many of them have live music. We enjoyed an authentic Mexican dinner at Alma de Mexico. Back in Cabo San Lucas, we also enjoyed a nice little morning walk at a local city park with a botanical garden and cultural center on site. The park is just at the edge of the downtown, only a few minutes walk from the marina and the bar area where Cabo Wabo is located. It's a nice quiet spot to take in some views of Cabo, especially the mansions in the upscale hillside neighborhood of Pedregal. It would also be a great spot to watch the famous Cabo sunsets. Finally, let's talk about the main area where most visitors tend to spend their time, the marina and the adjacent Medano Beach. The marina is surrounded by a lively boardwalk lined with bars, restaurants, and of course, vendors. It's a great place to sit down for a drink, have some seafood, and people watch. Here's a tip, don't pay more than 40 pesos for a beer. We found some cheap beer at Sancho's, which also serves pink tacos, and at a place called Vibrant, but there's many more. Sometimes they will say it's 80 pesos for two beers, so if you're planning to have a couple of cold ones anyway, it's still 40 pesos. On the east side of the marina, you'll find the main beach in town, Medano Beach. And you can actually swim here. As I mentioned earlier, many of the beaches in the area are unswimmable or only suggested for the strongest swimmers. The sand here is ultra soft and the water is perfectly Caribbean clear and turquoise. Of course, there are plenty of beach bars, day clubs, and even massages on the beach. But be prepared because when there's two cruise ships in town, it gets busy. For more information on all the activities and things we did in this video so that you can try them yourself, I've left links in the video description below. If you want a more extensive list of things to do in Cabo, check out my travel blog, which has a handful of other activities that we didn't get a chance to do this time around, like marlin fishing, swimming with whale sharks, visiting the magical town of Todos Santos, and lots more. So have a read or stay tuned to my channel for part two and let me know in the comments what else you enjoy doing so I can feature it in a follow-up video. Thanks for watching and supporting my channel and I will see you in the next one.